Hi there. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to georeference a raster layer within ArcGIS Pro. So first of all, this is the area that I'm going to be georeferencing to. And what I have here is an already georeferenced base map. I could work with the existing base map in ArcGIS Pro, um, but this Ordnance Survey map just gives me a little bit more detail to, to work with and will make it easier to align the layer that I'm trying to georeference. So what I'm going to do next is show you the layer that I'm trying to georeference. So I'm just going to right click and go zoom to layer. So this is my ungeo-referenced raster layer. It's a TIFF file, um, but at the moment it's appearing in the middle of nowhere at zero, zero, because it has no georeferencing information associated with it. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm here is just make a mental note of the rough extent of this layer, because the first thing we're going to try to do is to align it by eye um, with our display extent and once it's roughly in place that's then going to make it easier to properly georeference the layer. So this actually covers a greater extent than my reference map if I zoom back here. So I'm going to zoom out here slightly in the hopes that I can get it to align a bit more closely when I first bring the layer to roughly the right region. So the first thing we need to do to start georeferencing is make sure we've selected the layer that we want to georeference in our table of contents, because when we click georeference, it's going to apply it to whichever layer is currently selected. So don't um, get confused and select your base map by accident, or you could end up moving that away from um, its original location where it's correctly georeferenced. We're then going to go into the imagery tab on our um, ribbon up here and click the georeference button and that's now activated georeferencing and you can see we now have the georeference menu up the top here so i'm going to go in here and the first thing i'm going to do is fit to display and that's literally going to take our map the layer that we're georeferencing and move it to our current display extent and that's why it's useful to have a picture in your mind of what that extent should be like and try to get it roughly covering um, your area of interest. Now, we do have an auto georeference option. What I've discovered is unless the two maps are very similar, I've not had very good results with this option. So if you're trying to georeference to almost identical maps, um, and there's just a few features or highlighted areas on them, it might be worth a try. Um, but for today, I'm going to stick with manual georeferencing. So we could go straight in and try to do a very detailed job of the, the georeferencing. But personally, what I like to do is try to roughly align my layers first of all, um, and then go back and do the, the detailed georeferencing afterwards. So you, in order to align them, we're going to need to click the Add Control Points button. And the first click, actually, after you've done that, generally doesn't do anything except for activate um, the add control points cursor. So you can see I've clicked once and it's now saying from point bracket source. So what that means is that we need to click a point on the layer that we're trying to georeference. That's our source. Um, so I'm going to go with this and I'm only doing this very roughly at the moment. I'm not trying to be precise just yet um, with the roundabout just here um, and road junction. And then I'm going to turn that off and I can see that that, is, that corresponds to the road junction down here. And you can see my cursor is now saying two point brackets target. So that just highlights that we're now selecting a point on our target layer that we're trying to georeference to. So if I click there, if I now turn um, my layer back on, you can see it jumped position there and it's now aligned those road points. And actually, because I've got the scale not too far off initially, they're now not a million miles apart, which means we can probably jump straight to trying to do a more precise job of the georeferencing. So when we're georeferencing, we want to select control points that are nicely spread around our image. Now, as I said, in this case, I actually only care about the bit that overlaps with this base map. So I'm not going to select any points outside of that region. Um, but as I said, if, if you're going to be using the entire map, 
you need to make sure that your control points are spread um, as evenly and well distributed as possible across the entire area. Otherwise, what happens is you'll end up with very accurate georeferencing for one section, but the error will become greater and greater as you move away from, from that area. So I'm going to zoom in up here. You can see that the map I'm georeferencing isn't the best quality in the world, um, but enough that we can kind of see similar features. And we can see this embankment over here um, corresponds to the embankment up here. And what I'm actually going to use, because although the obvious features are the roads and the buildings, actually both of my maps contain a one kilometre grid, albeit slightly blurry. And actually one of the easiest things to use to get kind of accurate result when you're georeferencing is the map grid. If you can line those up, um, then the chances are you're going to get a nice accurate result from your georeferencing. So I'm actually going to click where my grid lines cross on the source layer here. And it looks as though that's going to correspond to where the grid lines cross on my target layer up here. And if I zoom out now, turn that off and on, we can see it's already looking pretty close. There's some slight movement of the two in relation to each other. They're definitely not perfectly aligned, but it's a good start. Um, so what I'm going to try and do first is get a point towards each corner of the map. So I'm looking again for kind of grid lines. So I can see one here. So I'm going to click where those grid lines cross on my source. And that corresponds to that point on my target layer. Um, excellent. I'm going to zoom out. Annoyingly, because I have to keep turning the layer on and off, it goes out of the um, navigation mode. So I'm just going to click back on Explore for a second. So I can just pan down. And go back to GeReference. And where are we looking? So we're looking down towards this bottom corner. So let's go in. Ones. Let's go with this grid line just here. So I click the point on my source layer. And we can see it is slightly out, maybe a hundred meters or so. Click the point on my target layer over here. I'm going to zoom towards the bottom right of the map. grid line there. That's the corresponding point on my target layer. Okay, so we've now should have, so if we go to GeReference here, we can now look at our control point table. So this shows all of the points that um, we've selected and their residual errors. And what we can see is that at the moment, we have particularly this first point that we know I did very inaccurately, very roughly, has unsurprisingly the greatest error. So what I'm actually gonna do now is select that point and delete that from the, the georeferencing because I was only using that to kind of roughly align the layers in the first instance. The next four points should be much more accurate. So if I now go back and delete that one, and we can see the residuals drop right down. Um, so mostly looking at round about um, three or four meters. And what you can see here is that we have a number of different um, corrections that we can use. And actually the options available to us will increase as we add more points. So the more complex um, corrections, more complex patterns of alignment, require more control points in order to calculate accurately. So at the moment we can only do a first order polynomial, which actually, because these maps are the same shape and projection initially, should be 
the adequate for for what we need to do. Um, but I can add some more points just to I know, hopefully open up some of the other options. So if I add a point here. And, you know, when we're covering quite a big area, it is good practice to have some points in the centre of the map as well as the, the corners. Although, as I said, I'm pretty confident with this particular map that if I have points at each of the four corners, that's actually going to be good enough. Um, and we can see now I've added a couple more points that a second order, se uh, excuse me, second order polynomial has now um, opened up as an option. But I'm going to leave it on first order because, as I said, a first order adjustment should be sufficient to align the two maps that I'm, I'm looking at. Um, and we could do more points if we needed to. As I said, particularly if your two maps are in sort of different projections, you will need a much greater array of points and probably a higher order correction in order to ensure they're aligned correctly. But because these two are in the same projection to begin with, um, then I'm pretty happy that that's fine um, and actually if anything the last two points I selected I didn't do a particularly good job of and that's actually reduced um, the overall residual but um, I'm happy with a residual of around 10 meters for what I'm doing given that the map itself isn't the best quality so once we're happy we can go back to the georeference menu up here and we have various options select control points, delete control points. Uh, we can export control points. That's particularly useful if you're going to be georeferencing a series of maps that cover the same area, because actually potentially once you've georeferenced one, you could use exactly the same control points, the same correction to align all of the, the subsequent maps. And then if we wish, we can save this as a new layer. So we keep our old ungeoreferenced layer and create an entirely new georeference raster. But actually, I'm just going to do save, and that's going to save the georeferencing link to that particular raster layer. And then I can click close georeference, and voila. I've now successfully georeferenced my flood map to align to within about five meters um, of the base map. There we go. Uh, so I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like and subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for more videos in the future. Thanks.